Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to continue on our smart home venture with the deployment of Home Assistant to work alongside my already existing SmartThings hub. Now, the driver for this is simply that SmartThings doesn't offer the level of granularity that I'd like when it comes to automations. If you're just needing simple automations for the Z-Wave devices around your house, then SmartThings works just fine as a starter hub. But if you're wanting to build out your smart home and get the most convenience from your automations, Home Assistant looks like a good play. It has a myriad of automations, telemetry, and an absurd amount of cross-platform support. On top of this, the online community is ever-growing and you're sure to find a solution to a problem you're having online. This video is going to be a walkthrough of setting up Home Assistant from scratch and linking it to your SmartThings hub, but nothing more than that. We won't get into building automations or further configuration in this video, but if there's interest, I may make a follow-up video down the road. Also, if you're a novice home automator, you may want to check out the previous video I did showcasing my smart home's functionality with just smart things, as that would be considerably easier to take on. With that said, let's get into it. Now, there are a ton of different flavors of Home Assistant that can be deployed. You can run it in Docker, on a Linux VM, and even on a whole host of tinkerboards. But today we're going to be deploying Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4. I bought this kit for just under 75 bucks for ease, but bear in mind that you can easily run Home Assistant on older and cheaper Raspberry Pis. I just committed to the full kit because it was easier, it had everything I needed, and I didn't have to worry about getting home and missing a memory card or peripherals or uh, the proper power supply. Um, so here's everything you get in the kit. You have the Raspberry Pi, you have a nice case, uh, the power supply, and a 16 gig memory card, um, as well as a mini HDMI to normal HDMI and uh, get started booklet, which I won't be using. So to get started, we're going to need a couple things. The first thing, we're going to need a software called Etcher. Uh, this is the software that's going to flash the SD card with the Home Assistant operating system, um, as well as make it bootable at the same time. So uh, go ahead and download Etcher, get it installed, and of course links to everything needed in this tutorial will be in the description below. Once Etcher is installed and ready, we'll need to go and download the Home Assistant operating system. I have a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, a 2 gig model, so I'm going to grab the 32-bit uh, operating system ISO. It'll take a moment to download, so have patience, but once it's downloaded, go back into Etcher um, and go find the image that you just downloaded and open it from within Etcher. You'll then have to select what you'd like to image, um, and here you see my 16 gig memory card. And I only expanded the other drives just to be sure I was selecting the right one. Because uh, of course this is going to format and delete everything that's on uh, that memory card. Be patient as the flashing process will take a few minutes. Uh, for me it was about 5-6 to six minutes, so not a, a huge delay, but uh, the footage you're seeing here of course is sped up. And once this imaging process wraps up, you're free to pull the memory card out of your computer, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. Now, I wasn't sure if I'd have to interact with the Raspberry Pi itself upon first boot up, uh, so I hooked it up to a monitor um, and awaited it to finish uh, booting up and loading the Linux kernel and etc. Um, and I found that once I was left at this login screen, I was able to actually browse out uh, to the control panel from my main machine. Now, as, as you can see here, this can take up to 20 minutes, and that's not a joke. Uh, it took me about 20 to 25 minutes for this to complete. Uh, what's weird though is once it was done and I refreshed the page, I wasn't able to actually browse out to it anymore. Uh, so I had to go grab the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and browse out to that with port 8123. Um, and from there, everything seemed to work fine. So of course, step one here is we're gonna set up our Home Assistant account. Uh, this is going to be your login credentials to access the control panel. Uh, you'll go through an initial setup where it'll aggregate some demographic information. Uh, but as I understand this, it isn't relayed back to any home server or anything. It's all self-contained. This is just to uh, help make your automations better. So upon completing this, the Home Assistant is officially set up and installed. Uh, so if you want the cloud-based functionality where you can manage your home remotely via the app, You'll want to go to Nabu Casa and set up a cloud-based account. It's five bucks a month, but comes with a free 30-day trial uh, with no credit card information, so that's appreciated. So now we're just going into the configuration and the Home Assistant cloud and logging in with those Nabu Casa credentials I set up. So we're looking for cloud connection status to change from disconnected to connected as you see here. 
Uh, now what's important next is you're going to want to go into your configuration, uh, server management, and restart the server now. Once the server comes back up, we can then go into integrations, add integration, and search for smart things. Now if your Nabucast uh, webhook is set up properly, your URL should look similar to this one. So you're going to need an access token. You're going to grab that from SmartThings uh, after you sign in with your account. And you're going to paste it in here and click Submit. Then again, you're going to give it some demographic information, uh, such as where is this set up? What do you want to call it? Uh, do you want to give it access to all of your devices, etc.? So go ahead and hit Allow uh, in the bottom right for these. And that's basically it. In about 20 to 30 minutes with a Raspberry Pi, uh, you're now able to run Home Assistant alongside your SmartThings hub. Uh, now what's neat is Home Assistant has already captured all of the devices that I have enrolled in SmartThings um, and begin showing me telemetry data about them. Now, of course, this is where the real fun starts as you set up automations and configure rooms and scenes and settings, etc. Uh, but again, that's not the intent of this video, so we won't capture that in this video. Um, but if there's interest in something like that down the road, I may make a follow-up video. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. So if you have any questions, uh, comments, advice even, drop it down in the comment section below. And again, links to everything needed are down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and good luck.